Well, hello. We're here with Evan Cook. And Evan Cook is a Doherty resident. He is also the uh, Student of the Year winner of the uh, Monrovia Association of Fine Arts Award. And he's won this award because he does a lot of ceramics. So, Evan, do you want to tell us how you got involved in ceramics? Um, ceramics came to be when I was uh, a freshman in high school, and mm -hmm. I was uh, I was forced into it by a, a scheduling fiasco. <laughs> uh, I had moved to Doherty from Monrovia, and because of that, uh, I was a little bit late, you know, with the signing up for classes and picking who I wanted, and so I I, I got stuck with ceramics, and I, I tried to make do with it. It wasn't my best subject, and it wasn't my favorite class. I ended up passing the class with a C minus. Ouch. Which, yeah, I mean, going from C minus to artist of the year is, you know, quite interesting, but everything takes time, just like in good wine. But I wouldn't know. <laughs> uh, it. It just, it was one of those things where I, being a natural competitor, a natural athlete, I always wanted to be the best, I always wanted to pursue things until I felt as though I had accomplished something. And with ceramics, I never really felt like I accomplished something. In the class, I could do things, you know, I had decent projects here and there, and I had projects that I just hated. But it really didn't start to come into context until the following year, when, given more elective choices, I really just decided to stay with ceramics, and my teacher let me in uh, with uh, intermediate ceramics. So I started taking the intermediate, intermediate ceramics class, and uh, I really got more of a feel for it. Uh, I felt more more at one with the clay. You know, when I was having a bad day, I wouldn't necessarily make bad projects, but I would make projects of a different depth, a different medium, different style. And when I was having a good day, you know, it would reflect on my pieces, and I formed a sort of zen bond with uh, with the clay. And I mean, you know, humans are organic, clay is organic. I just it felt like a great combination. And uh, <clears throat> I really progressed through it. I really learned a lot. But when I started forming art, when I started creating, you know, really nice pieces, was summer of my my sophomore year. You know, I was I was going through a really hard time uh, mentally and. Uh, you know, I had a lot of family issues, I had a, a lot of very personal life issues, and a, a lot of stuff, you know, was coming down on me, and uh, I had a, I had an injured back, I had messed up knees, you know, I had broken both of my ankles, just wasn't having a good time in my life, you know. And what so sports it, were you playing? Oh, I was skateboarding, I was running track, uh, <clears throat> I I held the, uh, the, the 800 meter record for, uh, for a sophomore, which is a minute 59, and so you know, I just put myself through a lot, and it just started breaking down, breaking down, and I, I went through a depression phase, <clears throat> and um, being at one with the clay, I went through a huge period of of expressing myself through my work, and that's where I felt that I had become an artist instead of just a student, and uh, it, it was it was quite a big you know epiphany for me, but it was you know through that epiphany that I decided that, you know, this was something that I could quite possibly do in my future. Um, it, it, uh, it just, it took over my life completely. I was uh -huh. in the ceramics room every day during the summer from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. when my teacher kicked me out. From there, I rode my skateboard to Arcadia High School and trained with their pole vaulting coach from 6 until 8.30 at night. Uh -huh. Went home, read, you know, about ceramic artists, read about formulas here and there, and started forming my life, and, uh, and and ever since, you know, I've been in love uh, with with everything about, you know, clay and, and all its multiple mediums. So, how did you get involved with the Monrovia Association of Fine Arts, and and how did uh, Lisa come into being? Uh, well, Mafa came into play when I realized there was money in, in ceramics, and <laughs> you know, money in art, which most people don't realize, you know, there's money in art especially in an economy like this, but uh, again, I think it was the beginning of my junior year, we had just started putting, you know, these big sales together, and uh, Lisa had worked with uh, Sal Perez, my teacher, before, and uh, decided, you know, hey, bring your students out, we'll, we'll uh, give you a big booth, you know, for the, the art, you know, in the, in the park, the, the huge uh, celebration that they have. So I had all this accumulated junk, you know, that I thought was junk from uh, from summer and from sophomore year and beginning of junior year. 
So we took it out there, set up a bunch of tables, and uh, I ended up, you know, walking away at 320 bucks. You know, uh, it was about a year later where she contacted Mr. Prez and said, you know, hey, would you would you mind sending me one of your your, your better students, somebody who can relate to kids? I'd like to offer him or her a teaching program uh, as a as a uh, as a teacher at Paint and Play. So I went and I interviewed and. I felt nice and strong, so I, I nailed the interview and, you know, got the job and I've been working there for a year. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, I went through a series of plates. Uh-huh. You know, I, uh, it's one of the most useful types of uh, bodies you can make. Mm -hmm. So I started, you know, playing around with these nice, nice thick plates you could use as, like, you know, cake, pedestals, whatnot, and I used porcelain slips to, uh, to make a depth and design it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got crazy, I went all over the place, but, you know, this is sort of a tree with porcelain slip with my sort of abstract twist to it. Very nice. Instead of just showing a tree, you know, blowing in the wind, I decided to transform the tree and show, I don't know, just sort of a, sort of a free, free form flowing tree. Okay. And uh, through that I also picked up, you know, multiple techniques in ceramics, you know, this is high fire, and uh, this technique is called Reku. Yeah, well. So it's nice and uh, nice and shiny, mm -hmm. kind of pretty. This is a copper luster. Mm -hmm. yes, and, Sarah. and this is yes, um, Sarah. this is Sarah. This I is Evan her. Cook's sister. Yeah, she is my little. Hello, hello, Sarah. So yeah, I just went through a huge phase, you know, uh -huh. of plates. It was great. It was very versatile, and it was almost like a blank canvas. Uh huh. And and what about these? Uh, Beautiful sculptures. Oh well, remember the the uh, sort of depression, sort of off blue period. Oh I was talking yeah. About? This that was one of them. Yes, yeah, so it was also from mommy on Mother's Day. <laughs> what so, a nice Mother's Day. Well, gift. given the lack of money, <laughs> give her a, a piece, but don't tell her it was only that reason. <laughs> um, you know, oh, she, but it's she, more valuable. It is more valuable, and I've tried mine. to sell it it's every single time title. since then. Yeah, it's not <laughs> but nobody will buy it. So it's because it's mom's. Don't sell it. And it's Mother's Day again, so it looks like you're gonna have to make another piece. Oh, I've got a few waiting. <laughs> Although she is, you know, paying for college next year. Uh oh. And this is actually one of my all-time favorites. Um, it's porcelain. It's altered porcelain with. Uh, it's got about six glazes on it, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't see it just because it looks like a basic green, but um, I, I just stumbled on mixing glazes, you know, just, you would think mixing paints would equate, you know, the same way mixing glazes would, and it, it really didn't. I mixed a white, uh, this is a white base coat with a black hmm. over it, and it somehow mixed, you know, the iron content with the lighting and, and it formed green, and among that I sprayed ashes on the rim, I sprayed ashes over here, and, uh, I, I just fell in love with this. Is, uh, you know, I mean, that's just sort of thing, but when I say, you know, it takes weeks, it takes months, it takes years, um, you know, that can be described with, with all of art, you know. Although, you know, Picasso could have painted one of his paintings, you know, during his blue period in a matter of, you know, minutes, say hours, it was really the end result of his entire life, his, you know, depression, his depression, his struggle as an artist, you know, that really created that piece. It's not, you know, his physical hand creating it. It's really, it's really just his struggle. It's captured in those, those paintings and pieces. So, I mean, when you see a piece like this that's been altered, a piece that you see that has emotion in it, I mean, this piece could take, it could take really years to, to mature. Uh -huh. And, uh, I mean, sometimes people look at it and not see anything. And, as they keep staring at it, as they keep thinking about it, they'll start to set in more as, oh, there's something more to it. It wasn't just made in two minutes like just another plate. It was, it took quite a long time to, to actually, you know, put through and produce. So. Well, Evan Cook, that is a wonderful explanation, and I think that you're going to make ceramics a lot more popular in Doherty, Monrovia, Arcadia in our area of Los Angeles, our little corner of the world. Thank you so much for giving us this wonderful interview, for letting us come into your home and meet your sister and your beagles, Chocolate and Scully. Scully. Yeah, Scully. And your sister's name? Uh, Sarah. Sarah. And your mom and dad? Yep, yeah, Linda and Ted. Linda and Ted. Thank you so very much for this wonderful interview.